hey y'all today we're making something special right. i'm excited about it right now. now i'm pulling chicken off the bone i buy my rotisserie chickens when they're on sale at costco or sam's and uh i freeze them and then i get at least three meals out of one uh, rotisserie chicken if it's just the two of us we're on our third meal and i'm making soup so the first meal that i made from my rotisserie chicken was chicken tacos a few days later i made chicken and rice i used my turkey stock that i made back a few weeks ago and made chicken and rice and served it with green beans and mashed potatoes today well, I should say last night. Last night, I put the turkey carcass, which is, it still has meat on the bone. But, and I'm going to show it to you, but a lot of people don't like for me to do that. But it's got a lot of meat on the bone. I put it in the crock pot overnight and covered it with water. I have strained the broth, beautiful broth, strained it in a colander with a flour sack. I've got this meat that I'm going to pull off the bone, put it back in the broth in the crock pot, now I want to show you how much chicken was on the carcass of that uh, chicken bone. We don't waste anything here. Uh, these chicken bones and everything, the skin and everything that's left will be added to a bag in my freezer for my chickens. And, uh, and yes, chickens eat chicken. They like it. Uh, I'm gonna add this to the broth. Then I'm gonna add my vegetables and my rice and then when it heats up real good, I'll add some heavy cream. We'll have a creamy chicken and rice soup that will be delicious. So I've added the chicken into the broth. I'm adding the mashed potatoes. They'll serve as a thickener in my soup. And I don't have potatoes in my soup, so this will be good. And again, we're not wasting any leftovers. I'm about to stir this in. This chicken and rice had chicken left over in it too. And I'm not really here to show you how to make the soup so much as I am the bread. By the way, if you hear uh, saws and hammers and trucks, we are having some construction done. Watch for that video too. I'm very excited. It should be done in about a week. Well, part of it will be done in about a week. But I'm just adding this chicken and rice to the soup. Now, if I hadn't had the rice, if I'd made something else, I could add noodles or just spaghetti or even elbow macaroni. It don't matter. Pasta is pasta. But I've got this rice and I wanted to use it up. Now, it doesn't matter what vegetables you use. Use anything you like. I just use corn and peas. And like I say, if I had had veg all, I would be using veg all. I'm my vegetables so that you don't have to. If you want more vegetable stock, I just had plenty of chicken stock from that chicken carcass in here. So this is done except for the heavy cream and I'll add it at the end. I am adding salt and pepper to this soup and if you want to add herbs, this is the time to do it. But enough about this soup, let's get on to the yogurt flatbread. The first thing we're gonna start with is three cups of all-purpose flour. And I'm gonna put y'all down where you can see it. Again, this is three cups of all-purpose flour. This is such a simple recipe. I like to take my dough hook. This, my girl's got me this and I love it. It's a Danish whisk is what it is. I just use this and you don't have to have this. You can use a wooden spoon. You can use a regular whisk. But I'm just gonna do this. I'm gonna add, I believe it's one teaspoon of salt. Gonna whisk that together. I'm going to put two teaspoons of baking powder in here. And y'all, that's all but one ingredient. That's it. I'm just whisking it together. Very simple. Now, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to add plain yogurt. No flavor in it. Plain. You can use non-fat. You can use Greek, but it's got to be plain. And I am going to add two and a half cups of this. I want to try making yogurt. Have y'all ever made yogurt? They say it's easy. I'm going to do two cups right in my flour. And now I'm going to take a half a cup. And add it. Now, 
I'm just going to stir all this together. This is all the ingredients that goes in here. Baking powder, salt, all-purpose flour, and yogurt. You want to mix all this really, really, really good. Now what we're going to do is just spread this flour out. We're going to dump the dough right on this board. So the whole goal here is just to form a ball. We're not kneading it. We're not. We're just forming a ball and getting it where it's not sticky. So I just want it to all come together. If any of you know me, you know I love to work with dough. I just love it. I don't know what it is, but you're not kneading here. You're just forming a ball. Look how beautiful that is and how easy. So we're just going to cover this with a towel, a clean towel, and let it sit and rest for 30 to 45 minutes. All right, y'all, it's been just about 40 or 45 minutes. The timer should be going off soon. There it is. There it is. Hey, Google, stop timer. And we're going to uncover this uh, bread. It's rested. What that does, it lets the gluten relax, and it makes it easier to roll into the little rounds that we're going to roll it in. And then all we have to do is fry it up, and it's done. Looks pretty rested to me. What to what y'all think? So we're going to start by sprinkling some flour over this. There is no rule of thumb. There's no measurement on this. I'm not weighing them or anything like that. This is a simple flatbread. This is not anything fancy. So I'm going to cut it in half. And then I'm just cutting this into 12 pieces. We're going to make 12 little balls. All you're going to do is just roll these up just like rolls because you're going to flatten these out. So uh, you'll see me pinching some dough off, but that's not even necessary. I don't know why I did that. Just trying to make them even, I guess. But I'm just making the little balls. So here I just slowed this down for anybody that doesn't know how to make a little ball out of the dough. This is a soft, beautiful dough and easy to work with. But I just slowed it down for you. If you've tried making my 30 minute rolls, this is exactly how I roll them. Now, flatbread is a plain bread. It, it has, it don't have yeast or anything like that in it. It's just a plain bread. If you wanna add flavor, add salted butter. I've added sea salt on some of these too, and it makes it delicious. But I just wanted something to dip in the soup. You wanna do this till it's about six inches, and I don't want these thin like little tortillas. I want them um, thicker than a tortilla. This is a flatbread, just a simple yogurt flatbread. These do not have to be per perfectly round. They do not have to be a certain thickness. And you can roll them out or pat them out. Mine are so, it's such a soft dough, I'm just patting it out. And to start this bread, I heated my pan and added just a little bit of spray oil on the pan. As you can see, I'm using an iron skillet on my gas stove, but you can also use an electric skillet. Just set the temperature to 350 to 375. You'll see these bubble up a little bit. Uh, I add butter on the side that has cooked, and I'm using salted butter, but that's what I use, period, on everything. And remember, when using butter, it does burn, and you'll have to clean the skillet off every once in a while. Let me take this opportunity to thank each and every one of you for watching. Taste test here before I do the next one. Look how it tears. How pretty. And that's the first one I did. Mm, usually first ones don't turn out very good. Butter for sure. Now, if you're looking for a flavorful bread, this is not it. This reminds me of what might have been back in the Bible days, but I'm using it for dipping in the soup or dipping it in a dip. These are almost like 
you've heard of Indian bread. It's almost like that. Very, very good. This beautiful bread can be served with any kind of dip. It can be used with salsa and sour cream. I've had people ask me if they could use this for pizza. It's not gonna taste like a pizza crust, but you could. I've used it for uh, tacos. I like to learn things like the way they did in the depression. I wonder if they made yogurt back then. I often wonder about our kids and how they would do in a situation like that. I love the old ways. I love old fashioned stuff. You also can keep these in the refrigerator for up to 10 days and you can freeze them for up to three months. I heard the other day that we weigh 60% of our food. So I, that's why I use everything I can when I can. The example that was used is if you spend $1,000 in a month, you are throwing away $600. Can you imagine that? We should be ashamed. Yogurt flatbread, what an easy bread to make. Now this, is, again, is our third meal from this rotisserie chicken. I'm going to add just a little bit more pepper on the top of this. So here's our flatbread. I think it's beautiful. Uh, this was fun to make, and I'm so glad y'all were here. Y'all go cook something.